Hello everyone, welcome to Envoy.com. Today, I'm going to give a talk about support ARM60 platform in Envoy. My name is Li Zhan Zhou, I work at Tetrid. I'm also an Envoy maintainer as well. So first, let's go over the story of ARM support in Envoy. The first issue about ARM support opened back in 2017. At that moment, we didn't have enough resource, either engineering resource or compute resource to have the official support for ARM. But there are several people in community try to build Envoy on Raspberry Pi or other ARM board. Then the OpenLab folks added third party CI in Q2 2019. This year, we got some support from ARM, and then we can, we was, we were able to add some experimental CI in Q2. Then we get it officially fully tested in Q3. The first official release with ARM64 support was released in last week. Um, the version 1.16.0 is the first version have official. Um, ARM64 image build. I'm going to talk about the story how we get the, the first official release in CI and build system. So let's go over what Envoy build system. Envoy uses a Bazel as a build uh, tool. It provides the benefit of hermetic build and remote build cache. Um, we use a remote build execution from Google. Uh, also, we use cache for, uh, from an open source project called Bazel Remote with S3 backend for ARM. The build is really large today. We have, just for the binary test targets, we have 744 tests. Um, each test target have tens or 100 test cases. So this is really time consuming to run with small machines. How to make this run within time is, was also a challenge to get proper ARM support in Envoy CI. Also, Envoy have a lot of build dependencies. Uh, namely, the big one is gperf tools, which is a malloc extension, and nghtb2 for http2 co codec and YAML and other um, like proto protocol buffers and so on. Luckily, we didn't have um, any major issue with those dependencies. Uh, we, need, we had to do some small patches to make them uh, with, work with ARM build. Um, but overall, that was a small part. So let's talk about the CI. The Envoy CI runs on Azure pipelines. Um, before we have the ARM support, we, we run format check and do the release and that the binary build in the release um, build go to the Docker image. And we run some sanitizers, coverage, and GCC, and et cetera. I omit the Mac OS and Windows support here. Then with ARM, we add a new ARM64 release um, job here. And then we take the binary build from x64 release and ARM64 release to a Docker multi-arch job. This one builds a multi-arch image for both um, x64 and ARM64 and push that to a Docker hub. So there were some challenges for support ARM. The first one is Bazel. Bazel wasn't, um, Bazel didn't have official release before 3.4. Um, we worked with a team in Google to make the official um, release happen. Azure Pipeline started support ARM64 in Q2, uh, which is actually when we looked at it. So this was the right timing. And because the Azure pipeline doesn't provide the managed instance for the for its CI workers, 
we built our own self-run agent infra on AWS. And at the same point, uh, AWS releases its new ARM64 instance, Graviton2, which provides powerful instances. This gives us a lot of flexibility to run the uh, CI on large machines. The CI infra basically set up a idle instances in AWS that wait for a job from uh, GitHub and then it works on the CI job from Azure Pipeline. The code is in the CI infra repo and it's very simple. The next is the Docker image build. Docker now have the multi-arch support with the build kit. Um, we can use same Docker file to build both ARM64 and AMD64, which is x 64 images. We change the debug image from Alpine based to Ubuntu based to better support ARM um, because the Alpine GDPC base image that we use doesn't have the ARM version. So um, next, I'm going to talk about porting Envoy to ARM. Uh, Envoy is a modern code base. We didn't have a ma any major issue to build Envoy codes into ARM64. There's some caveats that we have to pay attention is the NDM and the signed char versus unsigned char, which is differs um, on compiler default for those platforms. The memory size dependent test is also um, failed initially because the pthread um, pointer size is different. This affects the hot restart version. The, the biggest one uh, we have to handle um, is the exception handling. Uh, initially, when we start ARM building, uh, while the build produces a binary, but it fails like 100 out of um, 600 of tests. Um, this is due to the C++ exceptions are not propagated through C codes on ARM platform, at least by default on the clan compilers. Um, we needed to pass the dash F exceptions to compile C code. This, is, this was very important because our HTTP codex depends on this behavior. Uh, we're, we're on the path to remove the um, remove the exception from HTTP2 codex, but that one was still at the issue at that moment. We also see some test flakes um, on ARM64 platform. This is mostly due to different timing caused by co um, different test timing. Surprisingly, some tests run faster on ARM64. This causes the integration test failures. So let's talk about the build performance. We use the AWS R60G 8x large instance. This one has 32 cores and 256 gigabytes memory. We do cache with Bazel Remote, which helps a lot on the build performance. Without cache, this one uh, costs like 40 minutes for every full CI job. With a cache, it normally runs within um, 15 minutes. This including like pull, uh, pulling a build Docker image and producing uh, test results. For future development, we have some uh, items left behind. One is WebAssembly support which is not merged into the upstream master yet, but it, ex it currently excludes ARM64. WebAssembly is a really important feature, so we, are, we will need to add the WebAssembly support to ARM as well. Also, uh, there are some downstream builds that doesn't have um, ARM64 support yet, like Istio Proxy or Get Envoy. We will work on this soon. Thank you for listening to this talk. Uh, if you have any question, I'm in the on the platform to answer the question. 
And you can also ask me on Twitter or Slack.